biggest and the best way to avoid your potential drivers or customers from going out on the internet and checking is by having actual reviews integrated into your website. Because the first place they're going to go when they hear about you is your website. And if they see an old antiquated website, they're not even going to check for reviews. It's Solving Your Driver Problem, where we bring guests who have real tactics and strategies for driver recruiting, compliance, training, and retention. Today we have Joel Mandelbaum. He's a strategic technology consultant for multiple companies. And really why we have him on here today is he's a number one best-selling author. Uh, his book is Winning Online. And Joel and I met preparing for a speaking engagement focused on driver recruiting and retention. And I really liked his approach to online reputation management, which is what we're going to focus on today. Joel, welcome. Hey, Scott. Thanks for having me on. Uh, it's a pleasure. And I hope I can be able to help some people today and impart some great content. So I'm excited. Thank you. Absolutely. Much appreciated. So we'll, the focus and theme of today's conversation will be answering the question, how do we manage and control your online reputation? And I think more and more people are recognizing the importance of this, that this is how, and, and relating it to their personal experiences. We've been trapped in caves and basements for the last six months. And as we buy more and more things online on Amazon, the first place we go is we look at the reviews to see the quality of the product. And I think folks are recognizing in the driver recruiting space, drivers have been doing this for years. Um, we need to catch up. And so we've got listeners on all ends of the spectrum here, Joel. So we'll try to, we'll start with some ABCs and, and move our way into the advanced PhD level question, but let's start with the why. So why is online reputation so important for driver recruiting? Well, uh, reputation period is important online, not just for driver recruiting, but of course for sales. But regardless if it's for sales or for recruiting a new uh, employee or staff member or driver, they need to trust you. They need to trust that you're going to take care of them when, they're, when you're working with them. And unless I understand, unless I can get that trust factor from you, I'm not even going to apply. So it's important because people, 90% of people now look for reviews, not just on Amazon, but they look for reviews on employee websites such as Glassdoor. Um, there's multiple sites that, that's just one example, multiple sites uh, where there's indeed where people will rate your business rate. What is it like working for you? Um, and the problem is if you have pissed off uh, Ex-employees they can actually rate you anonymously. So you don't even necessarily know who is rating So it's very very important because if I'm looking to drive and it's a and it's very competitive out there for drivers And I know that I get a pick of different companies I'm gonna look for the company that I get that warm fuzzy feeling with because just like no one's going to buy from you if they don't trust you, no one is going to work for you if they don't trust you. They're going to want to know what other drivers think. Has there been any issues? Were they resolved? So when people do their due diligence in terms of driving in a place to work, they do just as much, if not more, research than they would if they were buying something. Because now this is about their career, not just something that they're buying now and may never buy again. It's very, very important to make sure that everything exudes trust and that you're a, a driver-centric company. Absolutely, love that term. The, it's the, the driver-centric company. And we've stated for a long time when the importance of, of social is that it's a window into your culture. And a lot of times people have a value proposition to the prospective drivers of we treat you like family and we give you respect. Everyone says that. So it's not a very good differentiator. So a great way to make that differentiator and to prove that claim is when others, your drivers speak for you. That's so much more effective than saying it yourself. Um, so couldn't agree more. Hey, so why don't we just take a quick backtrack here. How did you learn this profession? How'd you become an expert at this enough, good enough to write a, a number one best-selling book? So mm. where, did it, where did it come from? It's quite, quite a great story. That's a great question. So uh, I was in the transportation industry for 24 years courier freight logistics. So I really understand the business. Uh, my office was in Canada and US, Western New York and Toronto. And around 2012, I sold the business and um, 
you know, I really never did much in terms of digital marketing. I think I did a Google ad pay-per-click campaign. My budget was $100 for the month. I didn't get any calls. So I thought the internet's broken, doesn't work. I'll just do what I always did. Unfortunately, that was a fatal mistake. And uh, as a result, I had to sell the company. Um, I did all right in the sale, but I could have sold it for significantly more than what I had if I had embraced technology online, especially. Uh, had a better online presence, a bigger trust factor. I mean, if you saw my website that I had back in the day, you'd laugh. You get a good roar out of it. It was so bad. It was literally just one page so the clients could log in and put their orders. It was not really a website even. Um, and, you know, after I sold it and I realized that technology was something that, um, that I will never, you know, underestimate again, I decided to um, my, take a journey. And the journey was to find top, top, top people that had already succeeded, that were doing things kind of um, not like everybody else, if you will, on the cutting edge. I really wanted to source out people and companies that were way, way ahead on cutting edge. And I never wanted to be behind again. And as a result, I learned a heck of a lot of stuff uh, from top people that had been in internet marketing and developing technologies for more than 20 years, pretty much as long as the internet's been around, and hooking up with those types of people and really learning from the school, uh, school of hard knocks, if you will, and uh, made a lot of mistakes early on. But through those mistakes, I really learned what digital marketing is. And more importantly, uh, my passion is to help business owners succeed. And once I learned the, the method and the journey on what it takes to win online, I started getting you know, business owners after helping many of them saying, why don't you write a book? You know, why don't you do that? I'm like, I'm not going to write a book. Oh, it's too much work. I don't want to write a book. You don't make a lot of money writing a book. And then over and over, I just, you know, if, if here's a rule in business. If one customer requests something, take it, take it uh, with a grain of salt. But remember that if multiple customers start asking you to do something, it might be something for you to look at. So after hearing multiple times, write a book, write a book, I wrote a book and I wrote the book because I realized that the majority of business owners really have no clue when it comes to the internet. They fail like I did. And it's unfortunate because we all work very, very hard and for either a misunderstanding or miscommunication or the expectations are wrong can be fatal to a business. So I made it my, my uh, mission to write the book. Uh, it became a best-selling book. Uh, it came a best-selling book, a number one best-selling book in six categories on Amazon 48 hours, within 48 hours after I launched. And then I realized, holy moly, I've really touched, touched upon something that the majority of business owners are feeling. And since then, you know, it's been, it's been a, a, a wonderful ride. I've been able to help even more companies, uh, coaching business owners on digital, coaching them on business, period. I built, bought, and sold five companies. Part of the growth of my career business was through acquisitions. Um, so I, I really, really understand what business owners go through. I'm an entrepreneur. And as I said, it's my passion to help businesses, regardless of where they are in the cycle of winning online, whether you're just starting out and you need a website or you need to engage traffic on the other end. Once all that traffic is coming to your site, you know, we can help all the way through. So that's kind of where I got my, I kind of fell into it. It wasn't something that I had planned on. But it's something that I fell in love with, even though it's, you know, every business, even though it can be in the same industry and have same competitors, every business has a different need. And really, at the end of the day, it's identifying that need and working with them so they can attract their ideal target client online. So like you start with the business case. So for the owners out there listening, the business case is really simple. It's multipliers. <laughs> and, and for those who don't own the business, the the answer is really it's for your job so if you're a recruiter you know would you rather you're you're swimming upstream if you are trying to recruit when the reviews on your site on facebook on indeed are one star reviews uh your job is is going to be uh well tough to impossible these days and so let's talk about how we get in front of that so maybe let's start with the abcs maybe think back to the joel of 2013 if you sold in 2012, as you began your journey, 
Um, for those of us who haven't been paying much attention to our online reputation or have been passively noticing it, what's the starting place? Very good question. It's very important to find out first. The starting place should be, what's your positioning online? In other words, what are people saying about you online? If you haven't checked um, your company's um, reputation, then you're really working blindly, wondering why potentially maybe uh, you know, drivers that are maybe calling up to book an appointment aren't showing up or you know, you're not getting as high engagement. It might be because there's some negative things about your business. So what you should do is you should go to Google and go to Yahoo and go to Bing, those three search engines, type in your company name plus the word reviews, type in the name plus the word review in terms of singular because even a pluralized search will get you different results. Uh, you may want to type in your company call plus the word scam, uh, rip off, um, and you really, really want to see what's out there if your name of your company has been attached to any of these other words. Um, and even if there's nothing severely negative there, you also want to look at where are your reviews being posted. Yes, you may have Facebook reviews, might be Yelp reviews, Indeed, as I said, Glassdoor, Trucker, uh, Trucking, uh, sorry, Truckers Report. Those sites are very big sites in terms of content. And if someone does put something negative about you there, the chances are when I'm Googling your company name plus the word reviews, then they're going to show up. And if there's negative there, then it's hurting your brand, not just uh, from, a, from a, a reputation standpoint, it'll affect your drivers, it'll affect your sales. So what you need to do is start off by seeing what sites you do have reviews on, going through those reviews, um, making sure which reviews are valid and which reviews are not valid because a pissed off ex driver can certainly do some damage if it hasn't been mitigated. You know, people can form anonymous accounts and just speak ill of you and lie just to hurt your reputation because you've made an enemy out of a driver or pissed off a driver. So first thing is to go onto these sites, look where your reviews are. If any of these sites have reviews that are not real or fake, um, then the best thing you can do is reach out to those sites and ask what the process is to remove those reviews. A lot of them won't do it. Some of them you'll have to pay them to get it done. Uh, we have a travel agent client that got hit um, by a review site called 1-800-NOTES. Um, this was a few years back and there was the bad content about them and they called them up. They said, uh, hey, can you remove that review? They said, well, it's the $2,000 investigation fee and we'll see what we can do. And of course the review disappears in a week. Magically a month later, there's another negative review. So they've got you, uh, I, I consider that almost extortion because everybody looks for reviews. Well, 90% of people will look for reviews. So try to reach out to these sites, but the biggest and the best way to avoid your potential drivers or customers from going out on the internet and checking is by having actual reviews integrated into your website because the first place they're going to go when they hear about you is your website and if they see an old antiquated website they're not even going to check for reviews because if you're not with it if the driver base is now millennials they've grown up online they know what looks good online it has to speak to them online uh, and again if you're not up to date then they're just going to skip over you so it's very important that if you have reviews integrated into your website, I don't have a reason to leave your website to see these third-party review sites that are talking bad about you or extortion. Yelp is the best example I want to leave everyone with in terms of at least something to think about is that um, when you are in Yelp, it's not a good thing, especially in the trucking industry or the courier industry because Industry average reviews in trucking and courier is low to start with because you could have a good client for many years and the driver's late on a delivery that had to get there that causes issues. Now your reputation is only as good as your last delivery. So even so, you really want to keep people on your site. So what happens in Yelp is they so graciously give you a free Yelp spot. And then because Yelp is such a big, massive content platform about reviews, once you have a review in Yelp and I type in your company name plus the word reviews, Yelp is going to show up there. In some cases, they'll start to bump down your website. 
So I only have the choice to click into Yelp, but I see your Yelp listing, but what you need to understand is that all your competitors have paid Yelp to be on your page. So their whole business is by pulling your potential customer in, giving them other options. You want your drivers to be thinking, you know, what company can I, can I go with and what are the benefits of your company, why I should do that, instead of me now having a whole bunch of other options. Once someone leaves your website, the chances of them engaging with you drop significantly. We want to thank you for taking time to listen to Solving Your Driver Problem. If you like the ideas you're hearing and want more information, please subscribe to our blog. You'll receive a weekly email newsletter where just like this podcast, we're sharing the best ideas and tactics in the industry for improving driver recruiting, compliance, training, and retention. Go to avatarfleet.com slash blog to subscribe. While you're there, check out how our software and services are helping our clients hire more drivers while cutting their ad spend in half, achieve driver qualification file compliance in half the time, and reducing claims by 30%. That's avatarfleet.com slash blog or avatarfleet.com to check out our products and services. Yeah, so talking about third-party sites, you know, where we can't control what's going on, um, you know, you and I have, have seen companies for knee-jerk reaction, um, at least, and that was more the old school thought. I think this is becoming less peripheral, but let's, let's kill it right now for anyone thinking this way, of deleting the post. And mm -hmm. you've mentioned in the past the, the power of um, responding to it appropriately, professionally. And I'd like you to elaborate on that. And, and before you do, I'll, you know, I'll share from our experience by having, you know, there's nothing better. You can defend yourself and you should appropriately and professionally. And the best thing that we saw was when our drivers would come to our defense and a, and a prospective driver knows that there's some drivers out there that just see the world as sour grapes and they take, they can take them for a grain of salt. They understand that. Uh, and you even got some numbers at a five star review, you know, all perfect. Doesn't look real. It looks like you got your mom, your brother, your aunt, you know, to, to do these postings. So a simple referral. And if you have a referral program, meaning you're giving drivers a 500,000 bucks a pop for people that when they give them your friends, which tend to be our clients, number one referral source, they're motivated to jump on and help you manage that, that, that reputation. So would you mind just a, any more detail than what I described for people out there who've got a negative comment or review on, on Facebook, Google, any of those, how do you, how do you contr control it on sites you can't control? Well, you can't, you can only mitigate. Um, I mean, there, let me just give you a couple of, of, of other tips and then I can tell you what is actually what can be done. You know, you want to contact those sites. Again, if it's a negative review, that's not true. You want it removed. If it's a true review that someone's pissed off, you must address it and you must rigorously defend it. If they're not, if the, if the review or the comment you know, is might be half truth. You need to put in there what actually happened because you're defending your reputation. What people don't like is coming to a site where someone has all five stars, as you mentioned, 95% of people will not believe that you're perfect. And most people only read the first, you know, 10 to 15 reviews anyway, and you want to have as many reviews as possible. But if you have a negative review, Respond and respond as fast as possible. Go to your Google My Business, respond to that review. If you're in the wrong, apologize and offer the, to something to fix it. And you may never, ever resolve the issue that you had with that particular driver. But what it's meant for is that the person coming in that doesn't know your business, that has no history, sees, yeah, okay, people screw up. Yeah, drivers know that drivers can be you know, good and bad, there's good and bad actors. Um, so they'll understand. If you have a negative review though, and it's resolved online, that will give a driver more trust because everyone knows no one's perfect. People want to see negative reviews. People are actually two and a half times more likely to look at a negative review than a positive review. But if that negative review has been resolved, it can actually, in, I know in sales, but this could obviously be translated into attaining drivers, that a negative review resolved 
will increase your, your conversion rate, can increase your conversion rate by as much as 85%. So that definitely increases your trust factor. So if you have a driver, driver looking at company A that has all five star reviews, or maybe a 4.9 because they had a few fours in there, and you got company B with mostly five stars, a couple of fours, maybe a one or two in there, and what people are going to go right to that one or two, they're going to see that you resolved it. They're going to see that you engage with the driver. I bet you this will, you will get the phone call because I can't see an issue here and I don't trust anyone that's perfect. I want to know what happens if I'm mistreated at work. How do they resolve disputes? You know, what's the fairness like? And if I can see that you're, you're driver centric because you respond to those reviews and quickly then you're more likely to get that phone call or that interaction and that engagement. Makes sense. So talking about, you know, real tactics is, you know, what we like to dive into on these podcasts, you know, showing the, how you practice what you preach. Um, would you mind sharing for, again, we want to be on sites that we can control and, and you've got a nice way you go about that. Can you share how you gather reviews? And then your key of making it easy for people to leave reviews, right? We're, I don't know what it is about us humans, but we love, we, we take the energy when we're angry to leave reviews, but we re very rarely do it when we're satisfied. So how do you make it easy in a way that doesn't disrupt their day? Um, again, helping you steer the conversation in a way that you want. Very good question again, Scott. Um, so here's the thing. Reviews are work. If you're asking your customer to do extra work and they will do, and they will leave a review. Um, the problem is that the process of gathering reviews is generally left till the very end. And if asked at all, and that's the problem. That's why only around 4% of people will leave a review without being prompted. Now, if their experience was good, you need to tell them, at the beginning that part of the process is leaving reviews. We take reviews very seriously. We take our reputation very seriously. So whether that's a customer leaving a review or a driver leaving a review, I mean, I deal with business owners and such, and I teach them about online reviews in terms of reputation to bring in sales. As I said many times, it's the exact same thing. We won't buy or work for someone we don't trust. That's just a given. So to make it easy on the customer, my team developed a platform that allows reviews to be integrated right into your website. And you can request reviews by text right on your phone, which makes it simple. Because if I ask you to write a review, typically people go, okay, then they don't. You remind them they do. They've got to go to Google. They've got to log into their Google account. They've got to go to Yelp. They've got to go to Facebook. That requires work. Make it easy on them. Text marketing is the, a very new way of of getting messages out to your customer base, but it can also be a very good way of getting messages out to your driver base. So what we've done is we've enabled it such that all you do is you put the customer or driver's phone number in, they get a request by text, they just hit a button, leave a review, yes or no, yes, they put in all the information, hit send, and boom, it instantly shows up on your website. And the beauty is that we also pull in Google reviews because there's a lot of trust with Google. So if we pull the Google reviews into your website, plus the reviews that your drivers and your customers leave on your website, there's no reason for me to leave anymore. You've saved me a click. You've made it easier for me to look at your reviews. If I get a review by text. Now, other thing you have to, you, know, re, you made a really good point there, uh, Scott, in terms of we leave reviews when we're pissed off and we rarely leave reviews when we're happy. That's the old way. And we're finding now that things have been changing, that more and more people are leaving reviews that are happy. However, the problem is that if somebody is pissed off and they don't tell you and they go leave a review, they may leave a review different from what you think they'll leave a review. They may think, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, I'll leave you guys a review. And it's not so good. So what we've done in this platform is we've enabled a feature to mitigate the, a problem before a review is left. So the person has the choice of answering yes or no to leave the review. And if they say no, then a box pops up and it says, please tell us why you didn't have an awesome experience. Once they put that in and hit send, email goes to the business owner or to whoever's in charge, but a review is still not left. 
So it gives you another opportunity to clarify and to rectify any problems that were with the driver or customer, then they can leave a review. There's no other review platforms that do that. We built it very easy, very simple, very inexpensive, and it would certainly help to control your reputation when I'm on your site and to prevent people from leaving once they're on your website. That's what I do, and that's what my customers do. I mean, I have it on my, on my website, which is winningonlinebook.com. You can click on reviews. You can see my reviews. You can see how it looks. Um, I don't have a Google My Business page for my book because my book doesn't have a specific location. But if I did, it would also pull in any Google reviews as well. Amazon, I have reviews on there as well for my book. It's, it's just the way things are today, and you really need to get a hold as best possible. There's nothing you can do about third-party sites if they say no. But online reputation management, as you quote at the very beginning, is something that we've been doing for many years as well, where we have a method to bump down third-party websites. I'm not going to get into it. We've been doing it for many, many, many years. It can be costly, and unfortunately, there's never a guarantee with online. But we've been able to get it to work for the majority of our customers over time uh, because your reputation is everything. And you certainly don't want people seeing negative stuff about your business that's unresolved or even a pattern of a problem. So, I mean, you can't do much outside. You can do a lot inside your site because that's where most people are going to go first anyway when they hear about you. So that's how you can stop people from leaving your site and going to these third-party sites. Yeah, and to tie it into uh, the recruiting side of, you know, how we, what we're doing and working with clients on is there's a term I heard from uh, Joe Paluzzi, who's the, the king of content marketing and a fellow Cleveland guy. So he called, he distinguishes between rented land and owned land. Rented land is Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever you're of uh, any site that you don't own and you're beholden to the algorithm whether someone sees your posts or um, again, your reputation in this case, you're beholden to other folks. You can't control it. It's rented land, but they've got the eyeballs. So we need to go there to find people, but own land would be your database. So whether you're, we're talking a suite, our applicant tracking system or another one. And in sales, it's your CRM, you know, that, that to your point, yeah, he's like, email marketing isn't dead only because we can control that database. If we're putting a Facebook post or a LinkedIn message, there's no guarantee that the algorithm lets someone see that on the feed. And, you know, email, like email marketing still valuable, although we're really good at deleting and ignoring mass messages. Thus why texting is so important. So making sure, so shifting that communication, getting them off the rented land, and then shifting that communication to text for driver, for any human, it's important these days, but for drivers, getting that opt in when the, when you're dating and is so important because texting allows them to meet them on your time. Think about a life of a recruiter. You're doing interviews, you're posting ads, you're, you're, you're talking with drivers. I mean, anytime you pick up the phone to call a driver, three more call in. If you're texting, you can be having that conversation with multiple drivers at once. And you're meeting them on their time. They're driving. They're working during the day. They may not get back to you until 2 a.m. Just texting is the way to go. And I've, you know, I'm hearing stats of, you know, open rates in the high 80s, low 90s when we're texting drivers versus, versus email. So just what you're talking about is on the online reputation management fits just nicely with what we're recommending on the communication side with drivers. That's a good point, by the way, because statistics, I think. Only 60 some odd percent, I think it's 62 or 63% of all emails get open. So your chances are 33% or more that your email will never get open just because we get bombarded, spam filters, you know, programs that will put them into other folders. Um, so yeah, text though, it's, I think it's 93% of all texts get open within the first two minutes. Yeah. That's because right. we all see that little red dot. We go, Oh yeah, let's get on. Let's see what that message was. So, we all look at it. And if you make it easy for the driver to communicate, that's, again, simple, fast, gets delivered, um, a perfect way to communicate these days. If you're doing any kind of text marketing, though, you have to kind of be careful. You don't want to overdo it because it is someone's private phone. And if you're bugging them too much, they're going to opt out. You don't want yep. that. Correct. Correct. Um, 
Oh, so, by the way, the, the technology also has a texting appointment reminder. So people in HR can actually text uh, the driver saying, this is a reminder of your appointment. Are you going to... Are you going to show up? Do you need to reschedule? And all they do is they hit a, a yes, no, or reschedule, boom. And then the person that's in charge of that will get an email that they need to reschedule uh, or whatever that may be to another time or cancel or whatever. So it could help also in terms of, because one of the biggest time sucks, of course, are you going, you know, someone doesn't show up. You could have had that slot for another driver, you know, and you want to be efficient uh, with booking your appointments with your drivers as well. I like that for interviews. So, so Joel, we've got two minutes left and two questions to go. So we'll keep it at a, a minute per. Sure. What are the, um, what do you see out there? What are the most common mistakes that you see for people who are working on managing their online reputations? And you kind of touched on it and that's deleting a review just because it's a negative review. That's a bad mistake. If it's obviously, if it's not a, if it's a fake review, that's fine. If you can get it deleted. Um, but if it's a real review, and the driver is legitimate, driver or customer's legitimate complaint, you have to suck it up and deal with it. You can't delete it because if you delete my review, now you've made me an enemy. Don't think that I'm just gonna be quiet, that you literally censored me. I'm now gonna go to all these third party sites. I'm gonna anonymously uh, post real bad stuff about you. You're not gonna be able to find it. You know, and again, it's I could do it on a, uh, what's called a VPN, a virtual private network, so they can't track my IP address. There's many, many things people can do, and they will stop at nothing until your reputation is soured or until they've been able to do as much damage to you as possible. So don't do that. Even if you're not in the right, do the best you can to mitigate that situation. Reach out to that driver or that customer or respond to it where it's in a forum where they've left a comment and then you can respond to that. Well, you know, you're always late. So we doctor pay, you know, you didn't show up for three days, blah, 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 blah. You're defending your reputation. So make sure that that gets out there. You need to show that you're, you know, you're not, not just sitting there. And also one of the big mistakes, uh, Scott, is that people don't respond quick enough. Yep. You know, if you took six months to respond, I'm sorry, I don't, I'm going elsewhere. But if you responded same day within a reasonable time frame, then it, again, that will help to build trust. Mm -hmm. So don't delete and respond quickly. Very good. Well, the last question I ask everyone that comes on this, this show, Joel, is what accomplishment are you the most proud of in your career and why? Uh, it's an awesome question. It's been a long career. <laughs> I started my first company at 19. I'm now 52. So um, I would say pre-digital in the transportation industry, my, the height of that part of my career was being awarded Company of the Year for Business Excellence by the Toronto Board of Trade way, way back. And that was in 2005. Great, great times. Uh, and I would say post-transportation digital, I'd say my Best accomplishments, I have a few, is when my clients win, when they finally get it, when they call me saying, Joel, I got a phone call, we finally sold some product, or our traffic has increased significantly, or we're now ranking just, or even as simple as someone that read my book and called me up and said, hey, now I know the difference between a landing page and a web page or a home page. Just those little things really, really excite me, and I'm so proud when I can teach people something that helps them to either save money, to make money, to avoid an issue, just because of my knowledge that they just don't know. That's really, that, that's what jazzed me. That's my accomplishment to win my clients win. Very cool. Well, I appreciate your time today, Joel. For anyone that wants to learn more or read his book, uh, check out Winning Online. Um, you can Google it and check out his reviews while you're there. See what yeah, you can actually go right to Amazon. And type in winning online Joel Mandelbaum or go to my website winningonlinebook.com. I have a contact me button. Just fill out some information, just your name, email, and any comments. I'd be more than happy to have a conversation, see how I can help. Very good. And we'll link to that in the show notes here. And with that, Joel, we thank you for your time and um, we look f appreciate your help for all the listeners so that we can start to control and manage our, our online reputations. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you.
Thank you for listening to Solving Your Driver Problem with Scott Ray. Check out avatarfleet.com slash resources for more industry-leading materials on how to make the driver problem your competition's problem. That's avatarfleet.com slash resources.